Let's have a look at the SQL files that uh, come with the project. So uh, again, my project is downloaded to desktop and it's inside of Easy APN's um, master. And then I go to source SQL. And here I see two different SQL files. Now, if I go to a website and it says note, if you do not have a full database privileges, you will need to use alternative database file. You will not need the APN's device history table as it will no longer be used. So basically, if you have a full database access and all the privileges, you can use APN's file, this one. But if you don't have, if you're not sure that you have all the privileges, you can import the um, APN's alternative file, which basically will import uh, two tables, uh, by uh, which is by one less. APN's will import three database table and APL, uh, APN's alternative file will import only two tables. And your project will still work very well. So uh, let's have a look at them. On the uh, Easy APN's website, uh, the structure of the tables is outlined here. So you can scroll down and have a look at each table. And uh, what I will do, I will go ahead and import them right away. I have a brand new PHP My Admin installation. It doesn't have any database here. Uh, so I'll need to create one uh, from scratch and import this project into, into my new database. So um, I will call my database My Photo My Photo App and I will look for a different collection. So I will scroll down and use UTF-8 Unicode. And this is because I want to support um, a multilingual um, character set. Uh, it's not only English messages that I want my database to support. I want my database to support um, messages in other languages as well. So I will use UTF-8 Unicode. Okay, so database name is here and I will click on create button. My database is created and I see it on the left side here. So I'll click on the database name, but I don't have any tables. Now I'm not going to create database table manually. I will uh, rather go uh, and look at the top here. We have uh, many tabs and one of them is called import. I will click on import and I will use this page to import um, database tables from the project. So I'll uh, click on choose file and it will um, open the file picker. I'll go to easy APN's master folder, which was downloaded. I'll go to source SQL and I will choose uh, alternative file to import two database tables. Click on open. I will choose a character set. I'll leave it as um, UDF-8. Uh, everything I will leave as is. Um, SQL um, format should be selected. So I'll just uh, click on go without changing anything. And I see that uh, two queries executed successfully. And on my left side, I see new two database tables. So if I click on first one, it's going to be empty. So the uh, select SQL query uh, on this table returned empty uh, rows, zero rows. But if I uh, switch to the next tab, which is called structure, I'll be able to look, uh, I'll be able to see the structure of our devices table. So when user, when uh, mobile application registers with our Easy APNs project, it will uh, pass some of the details or I should have said uh, when mobile application successfully registers for push notifications, we will collect some of these details inside of our Swift code, uh, and then we will pass it on to our server side script uh, for it, for these details to be recorded on our database. And uh, this is what we can store. We can, uh, the P is um, auto increment value, uh, which is basically an ID uh, for, for our device, a unique value. 
and then we have client ID which is a varchar we can use it for um, username or we can use it for um, client ID for the ID of our user or we can use um, them for some categories uh, that we want for example um, clients in Canada clients in US um, for for different purposes it will depend on on your needs and then application name application version and then unique device ID and device token and uh, on the left side we can see if uh, any of these fields can be empty or not for example app app version can be empty so it can be null other um, fields like client ID and app name cannot be empty they're set to null and device model device version and then whether a mobile app has permission for budgets for uh, alerts and sounds and another very important uh, piece of information whether our app uh, whether this particular device I mean whether app this particular version of our app is in the development or production mode so when we move our mobile app to app store um, this the value of this column will be production but while we're testing our mobile application and you and while we use a development certificate the value in for this uh, field in uh, in records will be sandbox and then status when user uninstalled for example mobile application we will see that the status changes from active to uninstalled uh, which is a very useful information to know we, we can see how many users have downloaded our application and how many users eventually have uninstalled it and uh, the uh, the time this record was created or the time it was modified so again at this moment uh, this uh, database table is empty and um, we will see some records once we write some code another table is APN messages which is also empty at this moment but if I um, um, switch to structure I can see that uh, we have uh, a unique value which is of also uh, auto increment and then we have client ID for the message and then we have a foreigner key for device so this is how our two tables um, or our two records are going to be linked um, a user can have one device and there will be uh, many messages for this device so a message is linked to a device using this foreigner key uh, which will hold device ID okay uh, so um, let's go on uh, and the um, message itself so um, the um, the maximum value here is 255 um, and then delivery time and the status whether the message is queued whether the message is delivered or uh, whether the message was failed um, to be delivered and this is very um, important piece of information by default uh, when we create messages they will be queued for sending and it's only when we um, execute uh, a function to deliver to send messages um, each message will be processed and if delivered successfully this status will change from queued to delivered and if our delivery fails it will be um, changed to failed and then uh, again the time when the message was created and the time when the message uh, was updated okay and this is it uh, we are uh, we have only uh, two tables uh, for um, this installation but if you import um, if you import the other file of the APN skill you will have a third table which we can look at um, in our uh, on, on the website of easyapns.com so and the other table is device history and it says that this table will keep track of each time app is launched uh, this particular table only gets populated when device already exists 
and uh, with this data you can keep track of when user turned on and off notification or how often the app um, then app uh, launches uh, so I don't really um, need to know this information so uh, that's why I don't I uh, I've never imported this table um, okay so we have our database okay so this is it let's continue